and say hello everyone and welcome to another episode of To Be Released. I'm here with Zenrot. Oh. We are the, the world's strongest duo. We are the strongest duo on earth. Is that what it's called? That was what it was That's called? That's what it's called, yeah. There you mm-hmm. go. Um, so before we get into the episode, I'm going to continue on uh, my WrestleMania thing. Because guess what? WrestleMania is this Sunday. That's right. And remember when I said there was going to be 15 matches, I think? It turns out there is totally 15 matches. <laughs> All right. Was that uh, was that just a guess, or was that based on something? Yeah, that was a guess of me going like, "Here's every single title belt in question, and then here's some throwaway things they have to do." And so I guess there's going to be fifteen. And then they officially went out and said, "Here's fifteen. Here's the fifteen matches we're having for WrestleMania." And I was like, "Oh God, I can't believe this is real. How can there be so much wrestling? It's too much." Some, it's like the tournament of power. There's just too much things going on here for anyone to care about. Oh, is are we fine? Is Batista going to get what he wants? That's the question. Now here's the thing. Um, he's fighting Triple H, so there's actually a very good chance he's not going to get what he wants. Because, They're going to make Triple H win. Yeah. So Triple H has a very unfortunate history of just winning when it really seems like he shouldn't. Uh, the best, the best example I can think about is, um, and this is the example that I will always go to, especially now that uh, Kofi's going for the championship belt against Daniel Bryan is the fact that the Dan, uh, that, uh, Booker T and Triple H had a match way back when Booker T was, uh, when WCW, uh, was bought by the WWE and he joined the roster. There was a match that was basically, um, there's no easy way to say this, but, uh, Triple H said, I'm better because I'm white. And you don't deserve to be champion because you went to jail and you're black. Oh. And so the wrestle the build toward WrestleMania was is Booker T actually worthy of a champion? And then Triple H won. <laughs> so the story was Oh. He wasn't. The story was black people aren't don't, don't deserve to be champions. Is that what it was? Kind of. It kind of came off that way. Like to a lot of people, like I think here's the thing is that it's hard to tell what is actual racism and what is accidental racism because it's run by a very old man with very old way of thinking who is also a carny motherfucker. So, you know, stuff like this is anyone who has now been aware of because the John Oliver bit stuff happened. Uh, Vince McMahon is a crazy man, but I think yeah, Vince McMahon is not a well-balanced individual. No. Uh, one time, one of his writers, who, by the way, one of his writers at one time for WWE, just to show the quality of the writing, was the guy who played uh, Fred in the live-action Scooby-Doo movie, Freddie Prince Jr. He was a writer for WWE for a bit. <laughs> and okay. He, he has this great story where he was on the plane, and this is the way Vince McMahon thinks. He says, if you're not watching wrestling, why are you bothering to watch anything else? Wrestling should have absolutely everything you need. So Freddie Prince Prince Jr. was on a plane and he wanted to calm down. So he started watching a Richard Pryor uh, comedy special. And then Vince McMahon uh, was on the same plane. So he looked at him and goes like, what are you what are you watching? He's like, I'm I'm watching uh, I'm watching a comedy. Uh, You know, I just want to, you know, I'm watching, you know, I'm watching him. So then Vince goes, why are you watching that? If you want to watch comedy, we have Santino. Why aren't you just watching Santino, who is a wrestler? Uh, And then he said, "Um, I like Santino a whole bunch, Vince, but you cannot compare Santino, a wrestler, to one of the greatest comedians out there. Ever, of all time. Yes. But according to Vince McMahon, the only thing a person should be watching is wrestling, because wrestling offers everything. If you want comedy, it has comedy. If you want storylines, it's got storylines. If you want romance, it has that, too. So, yeah, that was... fucking insane. He is insane. And there's a bunch of stories you could hear about insane old-ass man, McMahon. So, yeah, uh, Triple H, I actually don't know if Batista would win. I think, in my mind, it should be, because now that he actually has star power, you gotta let the guardian of the one of the guardians of the galaxy one of the best members of guardians of the galaxy actually win yeah that's the that's the controversy a long time ago where the rock showed up after years and john cena because he's famous oh yeah yeah well to be fair they at least built a match towards that here's the fuck here's the actual controversy that ended up happening that rock versus john cena fight was built as a once in a lifetime and then they did that shit again in a year and said, once in a lifetime, part two. <laughs> so, Not what that word means. 
that's not what it means no so they were they were building it as like once in a lifetime happens again and it was like no that literally doesn't mean that <laughs> if it's once in a lifetime it can't happen twice it can't uh though the bigger problem with rock was that he was uh he's you know obviously the rock is in shape but he's not in wrestling shape there's a difference is that wrestlers have to actually train to be you have to keep your uh stamina high because it's one thing to be super built in jack it's another thing to be able to actually carry a match for so forever how many minutes that's the one thing people don't kind of realize is that it's not enough to just be muscular you need to be able to actually pace out the fight in order for it to be realistic otherwise you just look stupid and winded that was the problem with the ultimate warrior is that he ran into the ring but the problem is is that when he once he was done running he was out of energy so all his matches sucked (laughs) (laughs) which is weird because they have so many old man wrestlers yeah, that that's another problem is that they need to stop having so many old man wrestlers. A lot of it is a case of just like um that's really all they know how to do. So, to them if they're not wrestling then there's I know the for, I know for Rick Flair's sake there was a little bit maybe there was a half of a half of it was a money issue and the other half was just like he just wanted to be in the ring because that's where he that's where he was somebody basically. You know, people would cheer for what he did and all that stuff. I, 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 let me, I mean, I guess it's better than Hulk Hogan and just being a crazy person. Oh, then better than saying, uh, I shouldn't have eaten that sushi, brother. I shouldn't have. <laughs> I feel bloated and then saying something horrible. <laughs> Which, uh, apparently, he will sue you if you try and say that to his face. So get ready for it to be released to get taken down for Hogan. for bringing Taken down by Hulk Hogan? Whatever, I'll fucking take you on, Hogan. I'm still waiting for that fucking apology. That shit ain't happening. No, it ain't. Uh, by the way, he's going to be at WrestleMania too. So just kind of fuck me, right, for liking wrestling? He's going to fight? No, he's going to be the host. Uh, oh. Yeah, he's going to be the host. So he's going to go up there and say, like, yo, brother, I'm back. And then people are going to cheer. And then I'm going to go, like, I can't believe that I have to, I'm have. i technically a fan with the rest. It's kind of how, like, you feel about Hunter x Hunter fans. I can't believe I'm also in the same camp as these people. <laughs> As all of these people, I am also one of them. Yeah, that's yeah. not good. Yeah, that's not that's not a good sign. That's uh, there's very few times where I go like the crowd makes me feel bad that I like this. Whenever Hogan shows up, it's definitely one of those times. Whenever they cheer him, and I go like, God damn it, you guys are just. This is why carnies run wrestling. This yeah, is they why probably fucking love Hogan. That, that re- the the wrestling crowd is <laughs> probably a hero. Yeah, well, that's the thing is that it's kind of hard to balance the fact that he was a um for a lot of people that was literally the hero of the day they don't realize that what he's done that he was a union buster that he completely fucked over other wrestlers that he was also just a horrible fucking person in general that doesn't really matter to them because at the end of the day he's this symbol of like well he was also the reason why so many people got into it and a bunch of other stuff it's a very it's a very complicated issue complicated issues that exist everywhere else and are at least being brought up to the forefront and so now people are going like oh man this thing i like it's so troubling i've been a wrestling fan i've always dealt with that (laughs) i've never it never ended yeah it never ended at the least at the brief uh for the brief moment at least you know for a fact that what you watch isn't directly killing the people you're watching (laughs) Okay, so also a wrestling thing because I a lot of people on my feed really like wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, what I don't remember what it's called, but I read about some drama a long time ago, a long time ago, where it was Shawn Michaels was supposed to lose and then didn't, and I was curious as to how that's actually possible. Oh, the Montreal stru- a screw job. The yes. Bret Hart How does that versus even happen? Shawn Michaels. So what happened was is that the agreed upon fin- – so this is the basic setup. Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart did not fucking like each other at all. Um, the entire feud was built on the fact that um, 
Uh, it was kind of nationalistic in a sense because Shawn Michaels would be saying, fuck you, Canadian, and then he would be, like, spitting on the flag or wiping his ass with the Canadian flag. Something like that. Dude being disrespectful for the flag. So this is a case of, like, Brett was the villain in America, but then when you went to Canada, people loved Bret Hart because that was their dude. And this other wrestler had literally been disrespecting their entire country the entire time. So they were supposed to fight each other in Canada, and Bret Hart was leaving to WCW. Bret Hart said that I'm going to draw. The thing that they didn't want happen was that for Bret Hart to still be champion and to go to WCW as champion and then drop the, the championship belt in a trash can, which is what happened to their women's title. And that's why for years there was no women's belt because a previous wrestler, Medusa, went to WCW, dropped the belt in a trash can, and it effectively killed that title. So they didn't want that to happen with their main uh, fucking title. But Brett said, I cannot lose to this piece of shit in my country. This is like, don't, I will gladly drop it to you next night, but not tonight. This is the one place I don't want to lose. So they said, okay, you're not going to lose at uh, your, you know, Sean, you're going to go over on Sean. And then next, you know, next night you're going to drop the title to Sean Michaels or whoever they wanted. Um, Vince was so afraid that he was going to drop the title into WCW is that he went up with Sean and he said, so here's what's going to happen. Actually, you're going to get him in the sharpshooter and then the ref is going to call for the bell and then you're going to win. So it was basically, he talked So the ref, the ref did it. The ref was in it as well. He told the ref, the second that you see him lock the sharpshooter ring for the damn bell and the match is over. So... So that's the thing is that it's a coordination between the ref, the wrestlers, and in in essence, Vince. Because the ref is also telling the wrestlers, like, here, you need to kind of go. The ref is there to do the one, two, three, and to end the match when it's time to end the match. But he's also kind of sometimes telling the wrestlers what they need to do or if they're okay or stuff like that. So the idea was that the ref also knew, like, okay, when he's put in the sharpshooter, you have to call for the bell. And so um, the match happens. Brett goes into the fight and he's already like his family is telling him you need to watch out because you're there's a good chance you're going to get screwed. And he's like, well, hopefully that doesn't happen. And then lo and behold, Sean gets Bret Hart in the sharpshooter, which was planned, which they were planning. It was like, get him in the sharpshooter. What was not planned was that then the ref would ring for the bell and say that he tapped and that he lost. So then the ref calls for the bell. He never tapped. He never did anything. Shawn Michaels wins. And then you can see it, I think, in the fight itself is that after he calls for the bell, the ref immediately leaves the ring because he was like, well, this just fucking happened. We just literally screwed this guy live on air. And so what happened is that Brett uh, lost the title. He was fucking pissed because this is the one thing he didn't want he wanted he felt like at that point he was the main guy of wwf and that he had he had built some form of loyalty he thought that he would be trusted enough that he wouldn't betray the company that way and then at the last second he got fucked over because at the end of the day they were like i guess i wasn't trusted and so then he fucking spat on vince he tried to beat him and then as the pay-per-view went off air he went in giant quotes WCW to let everyone know I'm leaving. I'm out of here. Fuck this company. And then what people did. Yeah, I was confused because I was like, if you don't lose like you're supposed to, did you just actually fight? <laughs> like th- at that point, it was a serious fight. Yes, but it, it makes sense that the ref was the one that did it. Yeah, yeah. And the 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 crazier thing is that when he went to the back, that's also where you hear stuff like the Undertaker because he was like, "What the fuck did you do? Like why why would you do this?" <laughs> It was seriously a case of like, if you're just going to start fucking us over, what, what the hell's going on? Because if anything like this could happen to any one of us, then where the fuck is the loyalty? Where's the respect? There was a certain level of like, what, what's going on? And people were like, I know for a fact like he tracked, I think he tracked down like Shawn Michaels and was like, you're going to have to start fucking explaining to me what happened. And then it was a whole mess. It was a, it was a crazy time. The WCW, WWF era specifically. Yeah, it sounds like a fucking good mess. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of interesting history out there, but I think I hope that explains it. Um, funny enough, not the first time that someone's been screwed over that way, but uh, I think it's happened a little bit less since then. Usually now when they do it, it's a callback to um, that specific moment. 
and uh a lot of people thought that actually after that happened that um so once Bret Hart joined WCW he was so popular people assumed that it was basically WWE is finished it's dead they have they literally had every single he the WCW basically had all five pieces of Exodia and then on their turn they discarded Exodia <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way, like, oh. the, them being unable to uh, capitalize on Brett is what caused them to lose and what caused um, WWF to eventually, like, rise up Stone Cold. And Stone Cold became so fucking crazy hot that he started a new era in... Um... Stone Cold and The Rock have got to be, like, the most popular ever, right? Yes, at that time, First it was scene. Stone Cold by a long fucking mile because Stone Cold was... That was actually the reason why Brett eventually kind of went he started turning on the fans in story was that the fans were cheering stone cold and stone cold was an asshole. And so he didn't understand. Like, I, I don't fucking understand you people. You people are garbage. And he was right. <laughs> the people were garbage. <laughs> he was right. The whole time he was right. People were garbage. They were cheering a garbage man who was literally just out here being a redneck and beating the shit out of everyone. But yeah, stone cold had whole thing, but apparently people really liked that. Yeah. Stone cold at his, the height of his popularity is uh, something to behold. He is something like literally like the he was. I would say nothing has come close to that level of just pure uh, excitement for everything. Because once he started getting up there, and then the funny thing is that after he got injured and he had to leave, that's when the Rock kind of st- stood in and was like, he, then he became the guy, and then. And then when Stone Cold came back, it was a definite feeling of like, oh shit, here are the two top guys in the entire company, and they're going to be fighting each other, and then that's what caused WrestleMania 17, which has the greatest promo video ever, which is The Rock and Stone Cold fighting each other, set to Limp Biscuits My Way. (laughs) (laughs) I like it. Yeah, it's pretty great. And with that, everyone, are you ready for some Dokkan? (laughs) On for a while there i know well the thing is is if you get me started about wrestling i'll just talk about wrestling so that's what i'll do. To you. yeah fair enough so let's get into these uh these big boys let's rank these big boys and the first one to get on the big boy scale today is none other than vados or is that how you say your name vados or vados, vados. vados? Va- i think it's vados like a like Got, uh, just, da, I don't know if that's a spanish word but i think it's like a spanish gang in red dead or something i don't know vaya con dios Vaya con Dios, yeah. The the great the catchphrase from that character from uh, King of the Hill, Vaya con yes, Dios. The, uh... <laughs> yeah. Vaya con Dios. <laughs> then he fucking kills a bunch of people. <laughs> oh, I love that. All right. So yeah, Vados. She finally makes it into the game after people wanting her since she was revealed. <laughs> yeah, it's been a crazy long time for a character that popular. I don't really know what the what the deal is no the fuck really she, happened but she, she was mean. on she was in the title screen for longer than it took for her to get into the actual game because there was a brief period of time where it Actually was uh, true champa and uh beerus looking at each other and there was uh weiss and uh, vados on the side there but yeah it finally took a long time and then she comes here free to play which is maybe another thing of like maybe they just don't actually know how to make super attacks for the angel characters and that's why it takes just forever. have no idea that's not impossible yeah because i really think they don't really know what to do with them no because she does um in her special attack the same thing that uh weiss does in the lr beerus card where she, she just kind of makes a go a, a, a spear. little kick <laughs> she does a kick and then there's like a green spear around them and then that's it so let's talk about her leader oh, skill. She she is the um the universe six category lead with for free to play, I guess. It gives two key HP attack and defense sixty six percent up. Uh super attack is Re- Requiem of Destruction. Uh passive skill is Advice of an Angel, which has high chance to evade the enemy's attack, including super attack. And Universe 6 category allies, 2 key, attack and defense, 30% up. And this is when she is in her TUR version. Her link skills are the Innocence, Brainiac, Rival Duo, Cold Judgment, Shocking Speed, Godly Power, Shattering the Limit. And her categories are Realm of Gods and Universe 6. Uh, let's talk about the first thing first. Why the fuck isn't she on Peachy Peachy Gals? 
I don't think I fully understand what Peachy Peachy Gals is supposed to be. I don't either, and this is why Peachy Peachy Gals fucking sucks as a category. <laughs> I I just don't get it, really. Like, yeah, the I always first ass- I just thought it was going to be that's just the girls. Yes, but then it beca- but, but then clearly it isn't. No, I I literally think it might just be the girls that Master Roshi wants to fuck the category. <laughs> I think so too, but I would think that Master Roshi would want to fuck Vados, right? I I just think he hasn't had the opportunity. You're saying that he hasn't fully seen her, so he can't. He so hasn't he... ever. He hasn't ever attempted to physically assault Vados. Therefore. Oh yeah, look oh, forward. That, uh... I guess you can look forward to that in the new series when it comes out. Yeah, in uh, <laughs> when Super returns. Yeah, Super Returns, first episode, it's going to be Universe 6 versus Universe 7, uh, Pathway to Destruction, Master Roshi goes too far. <laughs> Has Roshi gone too far? And then the whole cover is just him doing the fucking, the hand grab <laughs> as he goes for it. Hey, uh, I wouldn't necessarily doubt that. Neither would I. Of all these things you're saying. Yes. So that also means that just like... Remember well, the, when they had that little mini arc in Super where he turns into a zombie? Fight that girl on his own because he basically just wants to be away from everybody else so he can molest her? Yes, I do remember this. Do it's you a re- thing that happens, guys. It totally does happen. Do you remember that really weird scene in Z where they're going for the Dragon Balls after Majin Buu has killed a bunch of people? And after Majin Vegeta has killed a bunch of people, I should say? And they're on a plane, and then all of a sudden he just motorboats Android 18 for, like, five minutes. I do minutes. remember that, because, like, like shifts or something, and he falls, and he falls onto 18, and he just immediately motorboats her for a really long time. Oh, while screaming, like, oh, Yamcha, how could you do this? You're just such a bad pilot. <laughs> yeah, so look forward to that coming <laughs> when Super returns. Except to a, a deity this time. Exactly. So yeah, Oh, to be fair, even if she was on that team, I guess there's really no point in using her because she only buffs Category 6. So she would only... If you were somehow running a um, Peachy Gals team that only used uh, Khalifa, Kefla, and Super Saiyan oh. Kale, because the, the Berserk Kale isn't uh, in the category Oh, right, because Roshi don't want no muscles. No, he doesn't. He wants Super Saiyan 2 Kale, though. He's like, I'm down with that. I'm gonna get. Let me get some of that. He is much cuter in that form. I'll give him that. I mean, she is. She is. It's. It helps that the broliness has been toned down significantly. Yeah, she's much less broly with titties. Exactly. The funny thing is, is do you have you ever seen all the fan art for just uh, broly with titties and how none of them came out looking like Kale? No. <laughs> Maybe you it's know because- what Kale looks like when she's in her berserker mode. Yes. She looks like Tequila Joseph. She does look like Tequila Joseph. <laughs> You're right. She looks a lot like Tequila Joseph when she's in Berserker form. Oh, you're right. But if I, I implore anyone to look up female Broly, and you won't. chances are you'll get Kale now, but you'll also get a bunch of old art of what people assumed was Broly, where instead of giant muscles, he just had a giant-ass chest. and But he Massive kept the same... Rack. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. They kept the same outfit, so he's he's not wearing anything. But she does have like the fucking headdress that Broly has. It just covers her boobs now. <laughs> so have fun googling that, everyone. Let's get back to Vados. Vados is basically just um, the Super Saiyan two Kale, but with a high chance to evade. It's basically the same unit. And she is a TUR instead of being a uh, SSR like um, the Kale is. But she is free to play, so that's nice. That's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah, what do you feel about her? The, for this long of a wait, for this to be the Vados card we get, how do you feel? Um, Not thrilled about that specific aspect of it, but I, I mean, she's kind of cool. Yeah. 
definitely pretty cool. I do like that I don't have to pull for her. So maybe I'll accept the fact that she is just a support. The funny thing is, is that I think a lot of um, Universe 6 free-to-play cards are just support units. So it's an entire team of free-to-play cards that support each other. <laughs> but they don't have any, like... Well, I mean, hit, right? It's Didn't hit. Hit carry the damage? Hit carries all the damage, but... Basically, every other unit is just kind of like support because Champa is support who's 40% support to attack and defense. Vados is support. Super Saiyan 2 Kale is support. The Namekians are support who also get like help from Namekians for some reason. Um, just a lot of them yeah, are just... Because Namekians are super good at Dokkan. <laughs> Yeah, because the Namekians, we don't, we're not talking about the Namekians because I didn't feel the need to talk about the Namekians at all. So that kind of just shows where their current placement is. Um, but yeah, it's it's really weird. So I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll say for being a free card, for being also Vados, and also I like the fact that she's a free to play agility, which is similar to her brother, which was also uh the first free to play card we got of Weiss was uh, agility. I think that's a good callback. I hope that was on purpose. Was it on purpose? I hope so. They don't have the same passive, but they have the same elements. So oh, no, I, I thought you meant your mispronunciation of Weiss as Weiss. Oh, Weiss. Oh, why? No, no, that one's because I don't remember how to pronounce it right, and I don't care because he hasn't done. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he's eating food, I don't care about uh, Weiss at all. Every time you say Weiss, all I can think about is the bad guy of that really terrible Final Fantasy VII spinoff with Vincent. Oh... I did not play that one. Where so. it's a where it's a, a third person shooter. And... Oh, I do know the game you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, the bad guy in that game's name was Weiss. All right, there you go. Well, either way, Vados is I think a four out of five big boy for me. I'll give her a a three point five out of five. All right, I mean, that makes her a respectable three point seven out of five on the big boy scale. Pretty good for a free to play unit. Really wish that. Yeah, not bad at all. Yeah, not bad at all. Uh, let's talk about now. This is the strongest duo on uh, Universe Six, as I called them on Twitter, and then immediately got someone uh, telling me they're not. It's Boda Magetta, who uh, easily the, that's the strongest character in the whole tournament. Exactly. Uh, just to give people a heads up, when I said, "Oh man, I'm I didn't get hit." And, but I'm really glad I got Bo to Magetta, the strongest uh, duo in Universe 6. A guy who doesn't even follow me went, um, strongest in Universe 6? <laughs> I think maybe uh, Kale Khalifla, the, the Mechians. I think there are better candidates for being strongest. And then I replied, yeah, but ne- none of them are a bear but a machine on each other's backs. <laughs> I like how uh, assertive he was about it, though. He straight up went at me like, um, are you serious? The strongest? The fool, the strongest, really? They're, uh, they're, the, the only duo that beats uh, Boda Magetta, and I'll say it right now, is Frost and Losing. The number one duo at Universe 6 is Frost and Losing, and then it's Boda Magetta. <laughs> yeah, that's a powerful combo, Frost. Frost and just fucking dying. Just just insta-death. That is what Frost... Just Frost and getting shit on, number one duo. Number two, Boda Magetta. Number three, probably Kale and Khalifa. Maybe. And if not them, I'll, you know... I'm up for debate at that point at number three. But Boda Magetta, they're here. Um, their leader skill is just int two key, attack and defense, uh, HP 90%, so who gives a fuck? Uh, the super attack is called the Boda Magetta Special. <laughs> the, the passive, yes. the passive skill is called Tenacious Duo, which makes me think of Tenacious D. Tenacious D, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Uh, their HP is three. Uh, their their passive skill is key plus three, and then their attack and defense one hundred percent up, and then their guard is activated against all attacks when HP is eighty percent or below. And then their link skills are Tough as Nails, In Fighter, Cold Judgment, Rival Duo, Tournament of Power, Warriors of Universe 6, Fierce, and Fierce Battle. And the categories they could belong are on Universe Survival Saga, Universe 6, and Joined Forces. Um, and oh, that's solid, actually. Yeah, not bad. And I do want to mention... Links. 
that this art, uh, if you have not seen the TUR version of the of their art, Zen, I'm going to give it to you right now. Because remember how we talked seen. about how um, Hit kind of looks like a penis? Oh, it's so great. Yes, it is fantastic. Everything about this is great, especially just like the the large focus on the fist that makes it look way worse. Yeah, the fist is uh, a problem. The fist is a huge problem, but I think it's on purpose because just look at the way he's looking at you like you know what it is. <laughs> you already know what it is. Y- y'all already know what it is. Um... I also want to bring up the fact that they have a higher chance of getting their guard activated than Ultimate Gohan, the STR version. Because <laughs> uh, Ultimate Gohan's is random. Theirs is the second you go below 80% HP, every single attack just don't work on you no more. Uh, they're great. I think there's nothing. So here's the thing. I've, As everyone knows, I did not uh, watch Super. So when Bodomageta came out, I said, "Excuse me, they do what?" <laughs> they uh, Bodomageta is the best thing ever. This is just fantastic. I don't know something about this is just pure amazing. It's pure joy made into a card and an idea of the idea of like these two characters who I think everyone can agree from uh Universe 6 when the Universe Survival Saga came out, it was why is Winnie the Pooh and a robot here? they teamed up they joined forces and now one is riding the other which i don't understand the combat would you like me to explain it to you yes please can you explain to me the the power okay. that boda Magetta is getting oh Magetta is the the robot yes super durable like even super saiyan vegeta couldn't really do like damage him very much mm-hmm. but he is a little bitch when it comes to getting insulted so if you say mean things, he's very emotionally fragile. Okay. So if you're mean to him, he breaks down in tears. That's a very uh, Magetta, relatable character. When he gets hit, he transfers physical damage. Like he, he like bounces off of him. He's like a. He's like a like a rubber man, like a like a Luffy or a Elastic Man. So, who is they? They put him on Magetta's back, and he has his hands over Magetta's ears. And says something mean to Magetta, he can't hear it. So that he's indestructible and his only weakness is protected because Winnie the Pooh is on his shoulders covering his ears. That is fantastic. That is perhaps the greatest form of teamwork ever created in Dragon Ball. <laughs> yes. That it is, is excellent. That's pretty great. That's fantastic. I love him even more. I also like that just saying Bo to Magetta is really fun. Because it also sounds like you're trying to do like one of those like oh what's that name from what's the name of the fire slug from Pokemon? Slugma. Yeah, and then you go into like Slugma whatever, Slugma Slugma Dick or something. I don't know actually the setup for Slugma. <laughs> but yeah, Botamageta sounds like you're trying to say one of those things, but it's not. It's actually a legit name. <laughs> well, that's because the bear's name is Botamo and the robot's name is Mageta fusion name <laughs> the fusion name of but of you know what actually i would like now is for one of the fusions games to come out and then they put on the patara earrings and it just turns into this <laughs> so <it's... laughs> exact same unit oh, God. except for the they're just on the back the only difference is that now they're wearing earrings and they're way stronger behind that 100 percent. so yeah how that's the kind of the breakdown of bodamageta how you feeling about bodamageta here on the scale uh i'm a big fan of bodamageta let me tell you i think it's hard not to be just like they're so yeah. there's something about Care them about just... how good they are in gameplay because who gives a shit um art is incredible the lore the the deep lore behind bodamageta is is really great um five i would agree with five out of five i also say that in terms of a unit they're actually pretty decent uh considering it's a universe six uh category it's them and frost and hit are really the i guess the forebrayers of just bringing the pain so 
I'm also going to go five. Just the teamwork, the name, the fact that their passive call, the skill is called Tenacious Duo, and it reminds me of Tenacious D, is also pretty good. All their link skills is, are also kind of based around defense. I also think it's really funny. Do you know what the fuck is the actual requirements of getting Rival Duo? Because I've never understood. Um... So, oh my god, I also love that their character icon is just Magetta's head, like, right in Botamo's crotch. Yeah, it's perfect. Like I said, it's the ultimate card in a lot of ways. Just to give everyone a rundown about who's on Rival Duo, it is um, it is Vados, it is Mai, it is Harutagarn. I guess technically speaking, it is uh, Tapion Harutagarn, but still, both Tapions get it. Uh, Android 16 gets it. Fucking the Supreme Kai gets it. Yamcha gets it. Bulma gets it. Krillin gets it. Giru has it. So what the fuck is the requirement? Some of them I get because it's like their enemy in the card. Um, like the Supreme Kai. Why does Bunny Bulma have it? Yeah, so every single Bulma has rival duo. It's not just one. Trunks it's... has it? Yeah. Is this just like secondary, um, like fuckhead to to the main character? But Bulma's the main girl. Yeah, and then also Toa's on here, so I guess that's also both Spring... Tien and Yamcha has it, but go- no Goku and Vegeta has it. No Goku or Vegeta have it. The Supreme only Kai Goku that has it is the one with Frieza, which makes sense. Yeah. So again, this this specific link, I'm not 100 percent sure what. I think the name could be changed. Is what I'm saying. Because Majub has it and his rival... He doesn't have a rival duo. He just has Mr. Boo, who is not a rival. GT Trio has it and they're all three of the main characters. Yes. So who won it? Which which one of them is getting it? And also Giru has it. And neither... None of the actual, like, Kid, Goku, GT, Pan, or Trunks actually has rival duo. If you look through all these, none of them have it. <laughs> Only Giru has it. Why did Videl and Gohan have it? I don't. I don't know. Does Mai have it? Are they saying she's a rival with her younger self? I'm trying to think. I think her rival duo would be um, Trunks, right? Future Trunks. They're not rivals. They're friends. Yeah, that's the thing where I'm trying to think about. Like, so what the fuck is the actual like? Like also, Why Android... does Giru have it? Giru has it. Android 16 has it, and I want to say Android 16 does not have a rival. He has a man he wants to kill. There's a difference. Okay, so the fucking cooler hench, the slug cooler henchman, like the lizard man. Yes. I don't even know his name. He's just the guy Piccolo electrocutes. According to this, it is Noise. No, that can't well, be this man's uh, name. clearly has a rival somewhere. His name is Naze? That's even worse. <laughs> That's even worse. That is actually worse. What the fuck? But yeah, Bodomageta is a deserving 5 out of 5, I'd say. Easily. Uh, easily. Easily. And let me do, let's just do a uh, quick one right here, because I don't feel like um, there's much to say about him other than their art. It is the April Fool's uh, Goku and Vegeta. Which is from Super Warriors, was it? Legendary Super Warriors. Legendary Super Warriors. Uh, for one brief moment, it got into my head that t- totally Dokkan should just open the floodgates and become the the Mugen of Gacha games, where they should have start allowing like next next Legacy of Goku shows up and he has invulnerability if you punch him when he's flying. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, and both of these in terms of actual units are not you can use them, so but they're not anything special. The thing that actually is special about them is that they just look so fucking cool. <laughs> they look great. I love them. Yeah, there's a lot of effort put into this April Fools joke that I almost kind of wish that they were slightly better units, but also whatever team you're going to use them on uh doesn't really matter. You're using them because you like them. <laughs> uh what do you feel about the Super Warriors? Goku and Vegeta. We're going to c- combine them into one. 5 out of 5 for Goku. Uh, 4 out of 5 for Vegeta because Vegeta sucks. Alright, I think that's fair. I'm going to agree with that one. 5 out of 5 and 4 out of 5 for Vegeta. 
And I think with that, we're finally ready to get into some questions. Uh, first things first, I will let me quickly actually pull it up. So if you want to just say something to the people, Zen, I'll, I'll allow you. I allow it. Um, <laughs> hello, people. Um, you put me on the spot here. Um, I know. I, I just told you to talk, and you were unable <laughs> to say I, anything. I was not ready, man. You really, you really caught me off guard. You know, it happens sometimes. You know, sometimes yeah. there's just performance. How issues. are you all, people? How's it going? <laughs> Please respond back to me with a comment to say how are you doing. Just let me know how you're doing. Okay. Assume well. I assume you're all doing great. <laughs> It's all we can assume in this world now, right? Is that people are okay. Gotta have faith, man. Gotta have faith. Exactly. It's a good way of putting it. And now let me see. I think I found... No. Yeah, there it is. There's Vados' eyes. So that lets me know that this is the question thread. First things first, though, let's get the, the one YouTube uh, question we got so far. It comes from Appa, and he asks, a question for to be released. Any chance of any past or current mods will be on the podcast in the future. That comes from Appa and that's from uh, the YouTube comments. I will say that, Fine. uh, I think we talked about it a couple times, but the idea is that if I ever, when I get my house back, when I get a house, yeah, uh, we will. Um, to be fair, one of the, on the way, on the way, one of the times we did it, um, this was before the big boy scale change. Uh, hope was on it. Hope was uh, one of the former uh, mods. She was definitely on an episode. But it's harder to schedule people when you don't have like a... That's why it's easy for me to get Zen. Because I know for a fact Zen is like... He's available during these times and it all works out. Uh, for people like... Um, that's another good example is D-Free. D-Free is on the exact same time, limit, time, time zone as me. So that's automatically easy. Um, for, but, but for some of the other people, like, uh, for example, Mayo and Hope, um, they're on different time zones. So it's actually very hard to get them because if one thing goes like wrong in the past, we could always say like, well, it's fine. Let's do it. We can wait for however long, but now we just can't do that because I don't know how long I have until it used to be a very easy process for me to go like, okay, I'm on my computer. So it doesn't really matter. I can easily just like get this and get it edited and it's released and it's fine. Now it's actually much more of a hassle, so it's just easier for it to be me and Zen in the, and occasionally D free for the time being. Uh, otherwise, it would require an extreme amount of work, and I, I really just want people to have to be released at a, at a regular interview of at least once a week. Good pace. So, yeah, exactly. It's either that or go back to the old days, and nobody wants to go back to the old days of just like an episode every month. At best. But uh, thank you for that. That was, a, that was a dark time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And now those dark times are over for now. Now let's go on to the Twitter questions. If you have a question, remember, wait for the thread and then ans ask us a question. We usually answer it. First question comes from Cookie. Hashtag shafted. Eggplant, crab, and then uh, on <laughs> mask face. So I don't know what any of those are. <laughs> The mask, the, the Toriko face, the Toriko face. Oh, it is the Toriko face. All right. He says, can we get your list of big boy rankings for the April Fool's jokes of Dokkan? Oh, wait, I forgot. There's a totally another person we had to rank. It's D-Free. Oh, fuck. We're going to wait that one for another week. Yeah. We, have, we need more time. Um, But he says, can you list, um, can you list or big boy rank the April Fool's jokes of Dokkan? Yamcha, Cyber Battle, doll, uh, Dolly Battle, and Retro Mode. Uh, I would say Retro Mode probably gets number one. Follow yeah, retro Mode is definitely the best one. Yeah, followed by Cyber Battle for making a Cyberman card that is just the the old uh, title screen. Yeah, the title screen. I love the one with the sword. Yes, the sword that Cyberman. Shit kills me. It's great. Uh, then it goes Yamcha because it's really funny that there is a leg breaking Yamcha. That's one of my favorite moments of Yamcha is when he gets his leg broken by Tien. And then all the <laughs> way at the bottom is Dolly Battle because that card's not even usable. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that ranking. If Dolly the Battle, the only one I care about is um... Retro Mode. If Dolly Battle was actually playable. 
that one would be maybe a tie for number one because you can't beat an entire card that is every female in one. <laughs> really dumb that you can't use it though. It sucks. It's so bad. It's, especially because they made the fucking Yamchas usable. Fuck, whatever. Next, it's kind of funny that the Yamchas actually nerf you when you use them though. It is pretty funny actually. <laughs> and um, thank you for the question, Koki. Koki. Next question comes from uh, Josh, uh, who I believe his Twitter handle at the moment is called Ignit Cracker, and then it is a what I assume to be a fancy man with like one of those monocles. And he asks, "Is Pixel Vegeta th- uh, T H I C C, which thick. I believe uh, is thick? Thick. It's thick." And then he linked us a picture of Pixel Vegeta's ass. Um. I actually, I'm going to give you the ass right now, Zen, so you can judge the thickness of this. Um, I, one moment. I know I've you're. I've seen the picture. I've I've seen it. Um, I am going to say that that's probably his own ass to make it look a little bit better. Have you seen Vegeta's tight leather pants in GT? There's no way that he's thick. Hmm, you're saying he's actually more GT like pants. he's more like built like Hank Hill. Yeah. Actually, do you remember when he got naked, when he showed up to Goku naked when he was fighting Frieza? Oh, when he uh, was, like, in Goku's imagination, naked? Yes, which, there's a lot of questions as to why he's naked, but the important thing is that he showed up naked. Uh, Because you don't lose your clothes when you die in Dragon Ball. No, you don't. But I guess if you're evil, it's something different. Maybe evil people lose their clothes when they die. Oh, because they get turned into souls. But then in Fusion Reborn, when he was a soul and he showed up to help Goku, he still had his clothes. It's a lot of questions. A lot of questions we have to ask Toriyama himself as to why Vegeta was naked for that one scene. That one time. Maybe. We'll figure it out. But uh, I'll say the, the I agree with the padding. You know, you never know. I'm going to have to do more research into this. I'm going to have to go play Super Warriors, I guess. Uh, thank you for the question. Next question comes from Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Johan, who is not asking us about Goku Black. But he says, why did you recommend me Goresh? And then there's a link to Goresh and just a bunch of meta coolers. <laughs> Goresh has very specific sensibilities. Uh, from what I understand, he really likes metal cooler. And there's something right. to be said about that level of dedication. He absolutely loves him some metal cooler. And you, yeah, you got to respect it. You can't results like that. No, especially because I feel like more people pulled on metal cooler specifically because Goresh would not stop talking about metal cooler. I don't even know if metal cooler is good, but I am forced to assume he is. He is good. Because metal cooler love is like 45% of Goresh's personality. Well, there you go. I will say Metal Cooler is actually a very good unit. Uh, he was kind of ignored when he was in Japan, from what I remember, uh, because it was Metal Cooler. <laughs> and he was also he's also a transforming unit, so people automatically assume those are bad, and then it turned out he's actually very good. And he, there you go. That's the story. So there you go. I hope that answered your question. Why did we recommend him? Because sometimes you just need that level of love. And the next question comes in from Bunny EO, who asks, is my dog cute? And then there's a picture of a uh, dog right here, and I'll say it's a very cute dog. It's it's just resting right now. Do you need the picture of this? Yeah, let me see that dog. All right, let me quickly give, uh, give Zen the dog, which sounds funny, but here we are. <laughs> no. Okay. It's not the first fanfic about Modcast, I'm sure. No, I think we didn't. We was didn't we find one once? Oh, look at that little fucking guy! Oh, he's cute. Yeah, that's an adorable yes. dog. That's a yes. Yeah, oh, look at that little fucking dude just chilling out. I that's what I like is that I like a dog who's just kind of chilling. You know, there's something yeah, to be said. I like about... a dog who knows that it's okay to take it easy. Exactly. Um. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Next question comes from I have no fucking idea how to say this name. I want to say maybe it's, um, oh, I have to turn it up uh, upside down, I think. Uh, I think it's saying, uh, I fuck with Pesky Gang. Oh, Pesci Gang. Pesci Gang? Pepsi Gang? I can't really tell. Either way, she's he's... a character. 
uh, he just asks, she left me, so... All he said was, she left me? <laughs> yeah, all he put down was, she left me. I'm sorry, man. I That's tough. That's rough, bro. <laughs> that's tough. It's rough stuff. I hope she didn't take the kids. Yeah, don't never take the kids, unfortunately. They're, unfortunately, never mind. I'm sorry for your loss, I guess. Uh, <laughs> next question comes from Nighthawk. <laughs> I said, unfortunately. They never take the kids, unfortunately. Don't fuck with the kids. This one actually comes back to Super Saiyan God Johan's question, which is, how would you rate Metal Cooler Gurish on a big boy scale? And I believe uh, for him specifically, it'd be the Big Getty scale. In which case, he would get a full mark. Oh, God, yeah. 10 out of 5. Exactly. Easy. And next question comes from some guy, and he asks, I just watched the documentary on Mr. Rogers, and I'm feeling wholesome, so I just want to ask, uh, ask you, or what makes you happy? Is his name actually some guy, or are you saying it's just some dude asked this question? No, some guy at Brick Floor. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Um, what makes me happy? Hello, question. Uh, what makes me happy? Yeah, what makes you happy? Uh, hmm. I have a real nice. I have like you know those couches where one of the last cushion is like a leg rest. Yes. I have one of those, and when you lay on the leg rest one, it's right next to the window, and there's a lot of tr- trees out my window. So on like a really nice day, you can just watch like the leaves blow and everything. That that's mm. state of peace. Is that? That's very nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as for me, what makes me happy? I don't know. I guess I actually saw this question as one of the very few questions we got, and I actually don't. Oh, you know what? It's hanging out with my uh, my brother and sister. That always makes me really happy. Uh, they're fun dudes to hang around with because they make me laugh even when I'm talking about how I fell over once and I hurt my fucking leg and I'm trying to tell them the story about how some lady had to come out and help me (laughs) and my sister's laughing at me for some reason just being able to talk to them uh, makes the the laughter just come out and everyone's happy so I'll say that hanging out with them definitely is a good way to get my mood up and also uh, trying to record with Zen anytime we record. That also is real fun. And then getting oh, people out there. Quality and, stuff. Yeah. And then I get to talk to the, the to two or three people who always comment, and that makes me a bunch of really happy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love the regulars, the video regulars. Yeah, they're always fun whenever they come up, and I'm like, yeah. Whenever LA fan is going through the backlog and he's just <laughs> watching every episode because I guess he had time, that's always real fun to see him. Because I'll be like watching, I'll be watching a movie, and then my TV will say, LA fan has commented, LA fan has commented. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, all right, go for the backlog, I see. <laughs> Good on him. And was busy, but he had to get it done. Exactly. That's dedication. Uh, thank you, some guy. Uh, next question comes in from Nagato Kun, and he asks, "I don't know what this means." He says, "What's your PP weight?" He doesn't How follow heavy me. Is it? He does. I don't know if he follows anyone, so I actually don't know where the fuck this question came from. Right. Well, I I don't know. I've never weighed it. I I didn't even know you could weigh it. Mm, I will say he's uh to just show you the four people of mine he does follow. It's D Free, JX, Zahal, and Alex. So maybe that kind of shows the <laughs> the type of uh person this question is coming from. Uh yes. I'm not saying like uh, you know, there's varying ranges of quality coming from all those four people at once. Uh it's actually the weird fusion of what all they think at the same time just manifested <laughs> into one person. <laughs> And he asks, what's your PP weight? I, he answers I, I don't know, my friend. I have no idea. I have no fucking idea, my dude. Sorry. Can't answer that question. And then the it's final... Yours. Yeah. It's a, it's a lost question to time. And the last yeah. question comes from Red Shadow. And he asks, a bit random, but who's your favorite fusion in the DB franchise and why? And that's not counting the fake Bodomageta fusion that we just made. <laughs> so it has to be... A- does it count the fucking ridiculous uh, heroes fusions though? Uh, let's say yes for us. 
He says franchise, so that's everyone. Okay, I like um, Vegito, where he's in the black and red. Oh, actually, no. My favorite Vegito design is the one from Super Dragon Ball Heroes, like the animated one. Mm-hmm. Black gi with the orange undershirt. Uh, that's good shit. That's, all right, that's respectable uh, for me. I think I'm not sure if this counts. I'm gonna count it though. It's uh, right after Piccolo gets him in a nail inside of him. If that counts as a fusion, <laughs> the one that's hyping himself up. Yeah, the one where he's like, "You can do this. You can win." That one because he's just so happy. <laughs> yeah, he just really believes in himself. Yeah. Piccolo, in general, when he fuses with other people, is very interesting because uh, I always have been troubled as to trying to think about, like, how the fuck does Namekian fusion work? Because he actually says, like, he says something very similar to, um, I guess, when after he fuses back with Kami, uh, Goku says, like, hey, uh, what should I call you now or something? Or, like, he tries to combine both their names or something, and he goes, like, just call me Piccolo. But also he recognizes, like, I'm technically a different dude now. It's really weird. I feel like the Mechian fusion is a similar fusion. I guess, because he takes part... I think that there there's subtle ways in which Kami shows up in Piccolo, and it's specifically that he has a... All of a sudden, he cares about the tower. Yeah, he's just like a vague nicer guy and that's about it yeah but also when they're destroying the temple during the Majin Buu fight he's definitely like this is a holy place what's wrong with you yeah yeah and he's he's more of a a more even temperament no. from Nail he gets the um uh the uh the like for Dende and I also want to think, you know, if, if someone was coming up with the names for Hellzone Grenade, it was probably Nail, because all Piccolo could think of was Special Beam Cannon. Special Grenades. Yeah, he wanted and to Nail go. And was like, no, <laughs> no, we're not going to call it that. Tiny Light Ball Explosion. No, <laughs> you want to try something else better, buddy, because that's, uh, that's really nothing. <laughs> yeah, we're not We're not rocking with that. No, definitely not. And uh, that's every question we got so far. So thank you, everyone, who sent us a question. Um, this has been To Be Released. I hope all of you enjoyed that uh, deep dive into wrestling history, as well as the Boda Magetta talk and the questions. Uh, this is the time where we say we don't know how to end this. Never do. I'm, I think now we got to like, we got like four minutes. I think we can decide on how we should end it to be released. It's been like, what, four years since technically speaking modcast. We should learn how to end a damn video with something. Yeah, it has been almost four years. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. Uh, let me see. What's a good way of ending it? Let's see. It's called to be released. Uh, oh, I know it is. Um, all right, everyone. I pretend none of that other stuff happened. Um, I'm Wokey, and this has been Zenrot, and we've been released. Boom. We're out of here. Oof. No? Okay, fine. Fair enough. <laughs> Let, oh, end the episode. God. All right, fine. No. <laughs> we're gonna. We're not going to end this until we figure out a way to end it. Oh, God. Not that. Nope. Yeah, well, welcome to the new ending where we try and figure <laughs> out the ending. Oh man. Play the English uh, intro to Yu Gi Oh! as the end thing. <laughs> I mean, I can do that. <laughs> That's never stopped me before. Like, usually I play a little song here, but now it's just gonna be the Yu Gi Oh! and the English ending. <laughs> just the part where it's saying your move over and over again, and then end it. Just your move. Alright, fine. That's the actual ending.